In this guide, I'm going to be looking at the uh, activity four in the Connell College scenario, which um, allows teachers to add issues for particular students. So essentially, it's broken up into allowing a teacher to select a student, indicating the type of issue, writing comments about the issue, and saving the issue, making sure that all of the fields have data in them and that none of them are left empty. So the first thing to do, as you can see I've got the teacher form which is just blank at the moment, open here. So I'm going to want to go into design view and well, first and foremost in fact go into the issues table and as you can see uh, the issue ID is an auto number, I created that as an auto number so we don't need to worry about that. However we are going to need uh, a learner ID, teacher ID, issue date, issue type and the issue. So we're going to need five text fields, however some of them can be combo boxes. So essentially we're going to want one, two, uh, uh, two, I was about three, three combo boxes and then we're going to want two just text fields. So all I'm going to do is under the design tab here I'm going to add three combo boxes and the first one it's going to be to get the student ID. So I'm just going to use the table students there. And um, there we go, there's the learner ID. And I'm also going to want to sort it by the learner ID there. So there you go, you've got all of the learners. Well, one thing I will do though, if I just go back, I'll also put the surname in there just so it makes it a bit more obvious um, what student is being selected. And I'm going to show the uh, key column there. Go into next, and I'm going to want to choose the learner ID as the unique identifying column. Just, and then going to call it. Just to keep it as learner ID. Click on finish, and there's that combo box. Looking back in the table, I'm also going to want a combo box to select the teachers. So back in design, combo box. Click that again, and making sure you want the combo box to get values from another table. This time, table teachers and teacher ID and last name, exactly the same as the students. I'm going to sort it by the teacher ID, unhide the teacher ID column, next select teacher ID and then finish. So there's that one like so. And then the other combo box we're going to want is going to be for the, um, not the issue, sorry, for the issue type. However to get all of the issue types and only have essentially one of each so that they're not repeating. So as you can see, if we just selected it now, we'd end up getting absence, lateness, academic information, lateness, absence, and we'd have lots of repeats. So to just quickly combat that, all I'm going to do is set up a quick uh, query design here. Uh, with the issues table, just resize it. All I'm going to want to do is have the issue type, and literally click on totals and group by, and then when you run this, You've got the four different issue types there. So what I'm going to do is save this as query issue types. And then close that. You can then go uh, in back in the teacher form, in design, combo box. And then you're going to want to, uh, first one again, and this time queries. And where you've got issue type, select that one. Uh, make sure that is selected. And then you're going to want to sort it by the issue type ascending. Just click next again and then you can finish. And so there you've got the learner ID, the teacher ID, and the issue type. However, just before these type, of course, we're going to have a text field for the date and then we're going to have a text field for the issue. I'm just going to stress now that it doesn't matter which order they go in, but I just do it in order of the um, date, how it appears in that in the issues table, but it, you don't need to worry about which uh, order you do it in. So we've got the learner ID, the teacher ID, the issue type. I'm going to then have a text field there for the date and also a text field for the issue. So if I just call that one date and then oh, call that one there issue. And then all I'm going to do is under format, uh, sorry, under a range, I'm just going to click on stacked like so and then just drag them up into the top corner there and then I will just play about resizing them making sure that all the data fits ok and especially the issue 1, the issue 1 is most likely going to need to be extended 
down a bit so that the teacher has got enough space to type out whatever the issue is for the particular student. All I'll do is then just resize that, leaving space at the bottom for a button to actually save the issue. So what you're going to want to do is make sure that all of these are also named, so I'll call that one learner ID and then I'll call that combo box teacher ID and these need to be named because of course as we've seen in some of the earlier guides when you um, when you make the queries and you actually need to refer to these you're going to want to know what they're called rather than just text 6 you're actually going to want to know what you are referring to so there's the last one issue also one, uh, one feature I'm going to add in the date here what I am going to do is uh, make it so that if I go to design and open the property sheet in the control source I am going to put in the current date which is the function there so I'll just have that one like so equals date and that means if I just uh, go into format is under uh, actually under data and enabled if I just select no then what happens when I open it in form view it puts the current date in today's date and that means you can't change so it does that automatically and also what I will do as well the teacher ID obviously you can use a combo box however what I am going to do is just change that to a, a text box and what I'm going to do is base it on the current user so under property sheet if you go under data and control source, I'm going to use my temporary variable, but if you're using, just linking to the text field of the username in the login form, then you can do that. They both work. So you just temp variable, and I've called my temp variable username. As I say, both of them work. You can either use the temp variable or refer to the text field from the login form, whichever you feel like doing. And there is that one there. Also, what I'm going to do is, under data, I'm just going to disable that one there. So when you go into form view, you've got the teacher ID HWO. Of course, that's not actually a teacher because uh, I logged in using a tutor from last time. I will save the changes. If I just log in again, I've got a feeling that AAA is a teacher. And then if I just click log in, as you see, there we go. Teacher ID is AAA. And you've got the current date. You can then go down and select whichever learner you want from the list of learners. And also then you've got the issue type there, and then you can just type in the issue. So what I'm going to do now is that's essentially half of it done. Now I'm going to do the append query. So you want to do create query design. And you want to uh, select table issues there. And just resize it. And then you're going to want to select append up at the top. And you're going to want to append it to uh, table issues. So what you're going to want to do is issue ID you can ignore but then learner ID all the way down to issue if you drag these down you then got to append to the relevant ones there all I'm going to do under the builder this is a bit of a uh, long arduous process you've got to go into the teacher form and this is as I say why it's so important to the name them so this is the learner ID which is going to be that one there if you just get rid of that bit at the front just click OK and you should get that, and then if we do the same again, this one's going to be teacher ID. And uh, if we go to teacher, and then teacher ID there. That one there is for the issue date. It's a bit annoying, as I said, you do have to go back through them, but there you go. So there we go, so like date for that one. And then the issue type, almost there, goes teacher issue type. If I just get rid of that, double click that to add it, click on OK. And then finally the issue. If I go to forms, all forms, teacher, and then get rid of that and issue that. So there we go, we've got that all linked. So I can save this now as query append new issue. That's job done for the append query. Now what the final step in this one is to create the macro which will um, run when the bus is clicked. And also, as I say, referring back to the scenario, it says uh, it should be able to save the issue if all the requirements are met. So we want to make sure the learner ID, issue type, and the issue aren't blank. So go to the Create tab and click on Macro. As you can see, we're going to want to show all actions. 
And what we're going to want to do is select if, and then under the expression builder, we're going to want is null, and then what we're going to want to do is go into forms, all forms, teacher, and the one of the ones was the learner ID, or is no, and we want to do this for all of the ones that we've got. So uh, issue type was another one, or is no, and the other one I do believe was the actual. There we go, the actual issue itself. So we just click OK. As you can see, you've got uh, it checks to see if any of them are null, and if they are, what I'm going to do is I want to output a message box saying. Please fill in all the details. And as I say, you don't need to worry about checking the uh, other ones because they're automatically generated. So they will automatically be filled in when the user, when the teacher logs in. Um, selecting the if, you will then want to add an else so that if they are all filled in, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to open query. And query name, we're going to want to append new issue. But uh, first thing, what we're going to want to do just before we do do that is to set warnings because Access does display a fair amount of warnings saying, Do you want to append data? Yes. Are you sure you want to you know, append data? Yes. You're about to add data to a table? Yes. So you want to ignore all those warnings so they don't pop up for the user of the database. We can say this as macro append new issue. As so, uh, is no forms or is no right. So in that case, what you want to do is you want to check the uh, check the if statement. Check to make sure that it, there's nothing in there that shouldn't be. If I just open it in here, I'm just going to double check. It does like to put in these spaces here, so you might just double check, make sure that these spaces have been taken out. And as you can see, we have just forgot to put in the closing bracket there. It's a very easy mistake to make when you are doing these. We just click OK now, all being well, saving that. Hooray, right, there we go. That's all saving that. As I said, it's very easy to go wrong with if statements like that, especially when you've got different sort of square brackets and curly brackets. So, yeah, do take care when you're putting in uh, especially longer if statements like that one. So, now that should work. Uh, the one thing that I am going to want to do when I close that is just go back into the uh, append query in design view and just click on totals and group by. Otherwise, if you don't do the group by, then you end up finding that you um, get the issues duplicated. So group by means that you only actually get one issue appended into the issue table. So we can save that and close that one. And last but not least, go into design view and add a button to the bottom here. You want to go to miscellaneous, run macro, and you want append new issue. And we will just say save issue. Next, finish, like so. I'll just resize that one a bit and make it a bit bigger. And there we go. Uh, now, one thing which some people like to do, which I will go through now, it's entirely optional, but what some people do like to do, if I open this in design view, is they like to open the query and then they like to remove any data, so if you like to refresh the form so the teacher can go straight into adding a new issue. And to do that, once you've uh, opened the query, what you're going to want to do is close window, object type form, and you're going to want form teacher, and you're not going to want it to save, so just save no, and then simply open form, form name, form teacher, and then as you see, so what that does essentially is if there's if none of the text boxes are null, then it sets warnings to off, it opens the query to append the data. It then closes the form window there and then reopens it with all the blank fields so the teacher can put in a new issue straight away ready to go. So we will save that one and close that. And then when we view this in form view, as you can see we've got the button there. So all we do, let's say if we say uh, Bates, we've got the student there. If we say lateness issue, I don't know, just put in something like student arrived 10 minutes late for class. And then if we just uh, save the issue, as you can see it's blanked everything, like so. And if we then open up the issues table, as you can see, issue number 15, we've got that in there set today for, this, for that specific teacher. 
issue, student arrived 10 minutes late for class, student ID, that's all saved, that's all done. And so there you go. The last thing that I will uh, take you through doing is just adding a message box, which you might want to do. Now, if you append new issue, if we go back into design view, the only other thing really that they might ask you to do in the exam is to have a message box here saying issue added successfully like so and then title I don't know, issue added and then we just say type information so there you go so that is how you append a new issue into the issues table as you can see there it is at the bottom there with the auto number automatically updated so you don't need to worry anything about that one and so yeah that's activity four of the um, scenario that pre-release covered.